Uh, today we're going to talk about the inverse trigonometric functions. In the past, you have learned about inverse functions. So let's remind ourselves, uh, inverse functions are functions whose domain and range have been reversed. Uh, we've learned about these uh, in the past in algebra. Hopefully you remember. So let's see how it works with trigonometric functions. So the notation is as follows. Notice that I have the little negative 1 as an exponent for the sine of x. That does not mean sine to the negative 1 power. What it means is that it's the inverse sine of x. Sometimes in some books, you'll also see, in the, see this written as the arc sine of x. So if you see that, you know they mean the inverse sine. Same thing works for the cosine. You have the little negative 1. That's the inverse cosine of x. And same thing for tangent. It's the inverse, uh, the, the inverse tangent. OK, so let's look at a little example. Um, so if I said to you, find the inverse sine of 0.5, what that means is what angle has a sine of 0.5? And hopefully most of you remember that it's 30 degrees. If you've forgotten it, I could draw our little uh, triangle that indicates the ratios. So if that was a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. You might remember our ratios. We often use it to remember it like that. And we know, and the question is, uh, what angle has a sine of 0.5? And we certainly remember that the 30 degree angle has a sine of 1 half or 0.5. And so this is kind of the reverse of that since we're, we are reversing the domain and range or another way of saying that is reversing the inputs and outputs. So the inverse sine of 0.5 means one angle has a sine of 0.5. The answer is 30 degrees. Next one might be one angle uh, has a cosine of 1 over the square root of 2. And when you're asking for the inverse cosine of 1 over the square root of 2, and most of you will remember that's 45 degrees. And you might say, what is the inverse tan of 1? Which means one angle has a sine of 1. And most of you hopefully will remember that the... Uh, uh, and I said sine, I meant tan, so we should fix that, shouldn't we? Okay, so the inverse tan of 1 means one angle has a tan of 1, and hopefully we remember that's 45 degrees. If you've forgotten that, we could draw once again, draw our little 45, 45, 90 right triangle, just to remind ourselves how that works. And we certainly remember in our 45, 45, 90 right triangle, the opposite over the adjacent of our angle, which is the tan of 45, is 1. And so the answer has to be 45 degrees. So the inverse tan, inverse sine, inverse cosine are very nice ways of finding the measure of an angle given sides in a right triangle. So let's do an example. This says solve the triangle below. And usually when we solve the triangle, we want to find all the angles and all the sides. Um, in this case, hopefully we remember how to find sides using, in this case, the Pythagorean theorem. We could certainly say 4 squared plus x squared equals 7 squared. 16 plus x squared equals 49. Subtract 16. And we get x squared is equal to 33. And x is the square root of 33. So that, that is nothing new there. But now the next part of solving the triangle is to find the measure of the angle. So let's move that up. So let's say we wanted to find angle C. Okay? We have any of the trigonometric ratios that we could use. We could use the inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. I, would like to, I don't like dealing with square roots myself, so I'm going to use the inverse cosine. I know that there's a 4, there's a 7, nice whole numbers. So I could say, gee, the inverse cosine of 4 over 7 is equal to what? It's going to give me an angle. It'll give us our angle C. So I would have to look that up on our calculator. So we have just brought up our calculator. And this happens to be a Texas Instruments uh, TI-84. 
And if I want to find the inverse cosine of 4 sevenths, I simply find the inverse cosine on my calculator. And in this case, I hit the little blue second button and the cosine button, which gets us the inverse cosine. Notice what it's right there on the screen, right up here. And then we um, uh, simply say, okay, we want to find the inverse cosine of 4 divided by 7. So I go 4 divided by 7. And if I just hit the Enter key, notice we get an angle of 55.15 degrees. And so our answer is 55.15 degrees. And that is our angle C. And of course, the easiest way to find out the remaining angle A would simply be to do a subtraction, since we know that angle A and angle C is 180, plus 90 is 180. So uh, we know that angle A uh, plus uh, angle B, which is 90, plus 55.15, that's going to give us 180. So angle A plus 145.15 equals 180. I should say plus here. If I subtract, minus 145.15, I will get an answer of angle A is equal to 34.85 degrees. But what we're learning new here is simply what we did right there. In order to find an angle, which we've never been able to do before, we can use the inverse, in this case the inverse cosine, um, knowing the two sides, in this case the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, to put it on our calculator and we can find the angle. It's a very useful function for the inverse trig functions. All right, let's do one more. So here's a problem. Let's, uh, let's just move this up a little bit. And it says, Scott Farkas is looking down from the top of a 100-foot tall lighthouse at a boat that's 800 feet away. What is his angle of depression? So the angle of depression is this angle right here. Uh, and he's looking uh, from the top of a 100-foot tall uh, lighthouse at a boat. So our boat is right there. And what we simply want to find out is that angle. And hopefully you all remember that the angle, that this angle and this angle here are equal because those are alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are equal. These two lines are parallel. So we really need to find simply that angle over there, which is also the equivalent to x, or our angle of depression. So what we now know is we have an opposite side. We have an adjacent side. And that tells us that we should use tangent, because tangent is opposite over adjacent. But in this case, we're going to use the inverse tangent. And the inverse tangent of 100, whoops, of 100 over 800. So the inverse tangent of 100 over 800. And then we have to put that on our calculator. Of course, we could reduce 100 over 800 if we wanted to, to 1 over 8. And now we have to put that on our calculator to find the inverse tangent of 1 over 8. So let's do that. So we do the inverse tangent of 1 divided by 8. So let's do 1 divided by 8. And we hit the Enter key. And notice we get an answer of 7.125 degrees. So the answer is 7.125 degrees. So let's put that there, 7.125 degrees, which means our angle up here is 7, down here is 7.125 degrees, which means our angle of depression is 7.125 degrees. Now clearly from the picture above, that is not a 7 degree angle, so this was not drawn to scale. 
But this is our answer. And uh, that's exactly how you use the inverse trig function. So once again, to use an inverse trig function, we use it in order to find an angle given certain sides. And then we could just simply use the si inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent.